City of London. This is White Night Summer, and we are ready to move on to our next speakers. It's going to be a fireside chat between Unity and Xflow, and we are excited to welcome the speakers. Hey, guys. Hello. Hi. Hey, Igor. Nice How to are you? see you. Nice to see you. It's always great to welcome Unity and Xflow in the virtual studio of White Nights. Yeah, so um, we are ready to move on to your presentation and fireside chat. Um, let's roll. Yeah, sure thing. Uh, just a couple of words, perhaps, uh, about myself. My name is Vlad. I'm uh, a client partner at Unity Ads, so I manage um, quite a big handful of advertisers in the CIS region, uh, including Xflow, who we are really happy to host here uh, today. Uh, Julia, it was really, uh, really amazing to agree to present with me today and to talk about the topic yeah. of retention optimization. <laughs> it was my pleasure, yeah. So, Julia, uh, the first thing comes first. Uh, for those few people in the audience who still don't know about the biggest success of the casual genre in the past couple of years, <laughs> could you please describe uh, who are XFlow? Yeah, sure thing. Uh, so Xflow is a fast-growing mobile game development company, and uh, it was founded in 2018. Uh, our first and main product is uh, Happy Color, and it is uh, the leader in the coloring category with more than 15 million monthly active users around the world. Uh, recently, it surpassed the 100 million download mark across Google Play and Apple Store, and um, uh, the app contains uh, more than 8,000 uh, high quality free pictures, including pics of some famous IP like Marvel, Warner Brothers. And um, I should add that uh, uh, at Xflow, we're developing a bunch of new games right now. And our focus is to launch uh, a few big, great products in terms of uh, audience, uh, like the broader one, and instead of tons of mediocre ones. Oh, thank you for that. Uh, actually, I'm really hopeful that uh, the new games that you guys will come up with will be just as great and even better than Happy Color, which is, of course, a really high uh, margin to, yeah. to follow. <laughs> That's our expectations. <laughs> so given the category of your current title, Happy Color, uh, my question right of the right of the races is, is, what is the average user life cycle like in Happy Color? Mm -hmm. um, basically, it's hard to describe the average life cycle as we have different user segments like any casual game. Uh, there are small fish uh, who play the game for a few days or weeks and then leave the app. Uh, there are dolphins whose playtime counts as uh, dozens of hours. Um, and uh, there are also ad whales mm -hmm. who have uh, like uh, one or two years retention and other types in between. Um, Happy Color is an ad monetiz monetized app. So the key metrics we are taking into account when optimizing user acquisition campaigns are user retention and uh, time spent in the app. And um, our BI tool, makes LTV predictions for each cohort of users. So we're focusing on acquiring highly engaged users. Mm -hmm. So yeah, that's uh, that was also my understanding that you're sort of looking for this uh, very long-term, very highly engaged user. Uh, so when we started using the retention optimizer last year, I think uh, in July, it marked roughly just a year of uh, our, our works on uh, audience pinpoints of products. Uh, what is the general feedback of your team so far? I mean, you have multiple people who have been working, who are currently working with our account uh, uh, on Unity. What is, what is their experience with this product so far? Um, frankly speaking, we love it. <laughs> we love this product. Uh, and um, uh, there are reasons for that. Uh, the main challenge we have in user acquisition uh, for Happy Color is that most networks uh, offer solutions for certain business models like uh, in-app ads, uh, hyper-casual games, or in-app purchases or subscriptions. But Happy Color differs because uh, it is a classic example of a casual game, but with ads monetization. So um, what we need basically from all the networks is uh, kind of a custom event optimizations. And those events are supposed to be based on the retention. Uh, and the Unity solution fits our needs of finding engaged users really well. So yeah, we're happy with it. 
Well, I'm, I'm really glad to hear it. I mean, uh, it's been ups and downs when we started setting it up, but having it fully functional for you guys, it's obviously uh, sounds like a big achievement on both sides uh, of the equation. Uh, for, for those of the in the team who are not familiar with what retention does, essentially, it optimizes towards a higher likelihood of sessions and higher likelihood of people returning by day seven. And that's uh, basically a dynamic pricing model that bids more for users that are more uh, looking alike, those high retaining users for Xflow in this context. Uh, and it bids less for the users who are very distant from that user profile. So as a part of the strategy, we utilize uh, day seven. Um, how does the day seven focus that we set up for ourselves actually align with your life cycle? Because you obviously mentioned that there can be very high returns on the very uh, long retaining whales uh, and the mid ones are already like quite past uh, the, the day seven. So how, do, how does it work? How does it, does it make uh, relevant users a little bit, uh, finding them a little bit more complex task? Mm -hmm. Um, when your target audience are female adults and uh, your product has a good retention, the marketing strategy and analytics are more sophisticated, I would say, mm -hmm. and um, you need more time to make an accurate analysis and um, uh, also the requir requirement for data collecting quality is increasing. Um, in my opinion, the ones who excel in this are leading the market. So um, I mentioned that uh, we distinguish various uh, user segments like small fish, dolphins, ad whales, and so on. And uh, the less valuable uh, segments are uh, the less time we need to evaluate the, their LTV. So for example, we can predict the LTV for um, like small fish in uh, seven or 14 days uh, after an install. While uh, for uh, Ed Whale, it takes us um, more than 30 days of their presence in the app. And uh, of course, uh, no campaign will optimize towards such deep in the funnel event. And uh, um, like uh, we're working on a faster prediction, but for now, um, um, se day seven is uh, for us is a good compromise between good optimization and finding relevant users. Mm -hmm. Well, thanks for that. Uh, that. That's really interesting to hear that, uh, albeit that's like quite a proxy event and that's quite short term, that still gives you quite a good leverage when you sort of consider the very long, uh, long user cycle. So uh, we'd like to think that machine learning is going to at some point replace us all, uh, start buying automatically and there will be no client partners, no UA managers, which is not <laughs> something we would crossed. personally want. Uh, but uh, Obviously, we're maybe a bit far from that. So uh, usually when we're, there is an automated product, there is usually a need to control it, to monitor it, to uh, manage the settings of it so that it kind of responds to the actual target. Uh, so my next question quite logically is, what are the steps that you or your team are taking to actually assist the optimizing uh, tech? Mm -hmm. Uh, yeah, the the machine learning you mentioned uh, and uh, optimization in Unity is uh, are really strong. So uh, we don't need to put a lot of efforts to set uh, everything up and to control the campaigns. And uh, things there are things we are always keeping in mind. Uh, they are traffic quality and the volumes. So what we do is uh, first uh, setting up the right base and max bits. Uh, depending on their um, like of the LTV expectations and uh, its correlation with the retention, and the second one is uh, checking the publishers to to control uh, the learnings we have, and uh, we are also removing less relevant publishers. Mm -hmm. So yeah, there is uh, well, from from what I can tell, there is quite a degree of also you you guys trying to influence the campaigns and making sure that uh, maybe. Uh, uh, not exactly it's going to be the clearest learning, but the fastest one. So it kind of responds to your user uh, LTV and your targets as a company as well. So it makes perfect sense to me. Uh, from that perspective, I, I want to ask you a more sort of controversial subject. What are the key risks, blockers uh, that you may see uh, with this product? Maybe something that you've experienced this year, maybe something that you're looking at in the long term. What are sort of your main mm -hmm. uh, blocking expectations? Yeah. Uh, there is one thing that you should be aware of. <laughs> uh, I think that uh, mm, it is a, a 
like the dependence on a sample size and uh, sample health can be a tricky thing to manage campaigns in the long term because, um, for example, we had cases where uh, in a chunk of traffic in a particular category was overwhelming. So it influenced the campaign performance and we had to adjust the sample through whitelisting. Uh, and I guess that may not be um, universally applicable to uh, everyone, but um, at least the health of the sample is what something we keep an eye on. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I, I would definitely agree with you that this is a definitely a common task because uh, on our end, like from the data modeling data science perspective, we are also uh, trying to be as engaged in terms of uh, making sure that the sample is collected clearly, that uh, some of those uh, aspects, like you've mentioned, the publishers are already also taken into account. Uh, but sometimes that doesn't really result in the immediate feedback uh, from the campaign. Usually it's also taking uh, the campaign to absorb some information to them. Um, uh, enjoy a month worth of data to make sure that this prediction is kind yeah. <laughs> of uh, readable per se from the mm -hmm. machine learning perspective. So hopefully we're getting sharper in this uh, in this, uh, and hopefully we will have less and less of that happening in the in the near future. We uh, already applied uh, like a huge block list, so <laughs> I think this should be the problem. So um, the next point that I wanted to make, maybe it will sound somewhat an announcement, uh, which is not something I want to make, but uh, Unity has been, hasn't been too vocal about this uh, since the iOS 14 and since the uh, main subject on everybody's mind is right now, how do we, how do we continue uh, this process? But something that we've been trying to work on uh, in the past few months is actual con uh, contextual targeting for retention optimizing campaigns. And this is mainly to do with uh, all of the users that don't have the identifier, the IDFA connected to them. Now, I don't want to sort of dive too deep uh, into the process. And of course, like everything to happen past September is pending uh, the actions of multiple stakeholders in the industry. Uh, but for now, it's uh, allowing us to optimize on the campaign level instead of user level. And uh, what sort of Xflow has been enjoying in the past couple of weeks is the exposure to the LAT traffic through raw retention optimization uh, in the contextual form. Uh, I know it might be a bit too soon to even speak about this, but maybe you could provide some very broad, very surface level feedback so far. Uh, yeah. So we buy LAT on traffic uh, through retention campaign for, I guess, uh, a month already since the beginning uh, of launching this contextual model. And uh, what we see so far is that uh, the model works uh, the same good way with LAT on traffic as usual uh, in terms of uh, algorithm optimization, in terms of targeting. And uh, also we don't see any CPI differences between LAT and, and non-LAT traffic. So it's basically a usual bit uh, retention correlation. Um, I should mention that uh, LAT on and off traffic uh, has a different monetizational potential, but uh, overall the campaign works well for both segments. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, uh, hopefully we will have a little bit more time as well to prepare uh, towards this big update uh, coming up. And uh, again, hopefully that the data sample collected so far in the past month and in the month uh, coming uh, will help us navigate the sort of the comparison of this traffic a little bit. Uh, but yeah, not to sort of dive too, uh, dive too deep into the subject, because I know even within this conference has been discussed widely by people that are definitely smarter than myself. Uh, so I wanted to ask a different que question in regards to the subject instead, since many of us are trying to navigate this idea of a post IDFA world right now. Uh, I personally, I'd, I'm not a fan of speculating, but maybe you could recommend some outlets, some voices in the industry that you find personally helpful or that you follow maybe closely uh, in connection to this massive change? Mm, I won't tell you something surprising, <laughs> but uh, yeah, uh, top industry players like Apple, Google, Unity, Facebook, plus uh, MMPs, plus ad network blocks. Uh, I guess uh, those are the most relevant sources of information you may have. And um, there are a lot of um, other channels 
uh, but uh, for me, they're more of an uh, imagine a scenario kind, and uh, I do read them, all those articles, <laughs> but uh, mostly for inspiration and not for the specific answers of how this new post DFA world will work. So um, one thing more is that uh, it's important to keep in touch with your team and I mean developers, product managers, analytics, uh, just to understand how uh, overall your product will work. And also with the partners you work with uh, to understand how each uh, network or partner um, is handling the situation. Uh, also from our side, uh, prior to iOS 14 release, so we're also running for now uh, some A-B tests uh, of the consent window just to uh, understand uh, the opt-in rate and maybe uh, to understand how to increase it in the future. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, thank you so much about this. Uh, I think uh, about your first point uh, on following top industry players, I think on my list, there's also XFlow there because I'm really curious to see how what you guys come up with, uh, how the A-B tests are going to uh, come through. And obviously being this huge uh, player on the ad revenue market in the casual segment, I think uh, definitely your, your company and your stories is something to look up to in this next change as well. So uh, a big pleasure to talk to you about the subject. I know it's uh, like complex, complicated uh, and like ever developing, but uh, it's a big pleasure to have you guys as, as a partner and as the, the provider of feedback, the provider of thoughts that are very, very valuable, valuable for our development. Yeah. <laughs> I think the same way, well, we're happy with our partnership with Unity and we're happy with the solutions. And um, I think we will work the situation through. <laughs> <laughs> well, thanks. Let's let's hope for that. And um, Igor, you can take it away for questions in this case. Thank you very much, guys. It's always a pleasure to listen to you too. Um, while we are waiting for uh, questions from the audience, uh, just a quick question to Vlad, as you're based in London, as far as I remember. Um, how does it feel right now? Uh, is it getting better uh, in terms of like lockdown and stuff? So uh, I I just end up feeling that we're one of the countries that stays in the lockdown most at this point because some other countries are kind of jumping train, maybe ending the lockdown a bit too soon. Myself, I have my three screens. I'm, I have my home setup. Uh, since our London office specifically is a very small one, we don't really rush to conclusions and we don't want to open up as soon as August or anything. So perhaps we will be staying home a little bit late uh, this time around. But generally, the situation is seeming to get a little bit better. Uh, we're obviously just shrinking and uh, fearing all of the all of the fears of the second uh, second wave, as everybody else does. But I think uh, we, as as a country, has have actually done done quite a few to uh, mitigate the damage, not avoid it, not uh, smaller it, but mitigate it in some way. So yeah, thanks for asking that way. Great, thank you. And Julia, uh, another question for you, very very interesting one. So. Uh, as you work with uh, apps and games, like um, how do you feel if you do not work in this industry? Where uh, would you work instead? <laughs> yeah, that's an interesting question. Um, I guess it would be something with um, managing or maybe uh, with uh, art. I don't know. <laughs> um, yeah, I have some hobbies, but uh overall i think that uh, at the moment marketing is my favorite thing um uh, if i wouldn't work in this industry i would work for like i don't know maybe with a small uh, my own business or with the uh, big company yeah and uh, mm, uh, working with the marketing art thank you that's great to know uh, guys, thank you for uh, insightful discussion. Um, we do not have the questions for this very moment, uh, but uh, guys from the audience, if you do have questions uh, to Vlad or Julia, please reach out to them uh, on WN Hub platform or via emails. Uh, they will be happy to speak with you. Am I right? Absolutely. Sure thing. 
Uh, I actually had one one more question for you, Igor. So yep. since the landmark event uh, of White Nights in St. Petersburg uh, this year is unfortunately not happened, uh, and that, the, this is the same event that I really loved uh, personally, this is surprisingly and curiously enough the, the event where us, Unity and Xlow, have met to discuss retention, and that was like one of the fundamental events that sort of became so the retention relationship uh, here became partially out of uh, out of white nights how do you feel about missing out and how do you feel about the next year's potential to have this event well i don't think that i can comment on the next year potential because like i cannot uh look in the, into the future unfortunately of course yeah. uh but as for this year well yeah we are in a kind of weird situation but still we have more opportunities than we used to have like, uh, tell me one year ago that we would host uh, a five days online event <laughs> virtually in five different cities from all over the world and welcome such the great people uh, talking to us. Um, like, for real, we have gathered more great speakers than we could even imagine because there is no uh, flying barrier, uh, visas barrier, uh, like you don't need to cover accommodation and stuff. You just uh, connect to people. And then you um, have an opportunity to talk to them and watch to their talks. Yeah, that's that's the really important part. You kind of subverse the ex everybody expectations and just moved it into something long term, something that doesn't really connect to a single event and occasion. And you can just launch a bunch of uh, really great meetings. Uh, I, I, I'm, I'm feeling really proud that uh, White Knights has a place in this industry and that's such a huge place. So. <laughs> Thank you. And it's great to have your support. Let's uh, look what's happening in October. Uh, who knows, uh, we might have uh, some great new announcements about White Knights Moscow for you. So uh, thanks once again, guys, for coming. Uh, this was great uh, to talk to you. Uh, have a fantastic day. Thank you so much for having Thank us, you. Thank you. Bye-bye. For...